None of us would he be here today if it were not for the efforts, vision, and leadership of Jane Doe, Inc., the statewide coalition to end sexual and domestic violence. How about a hand for all those participants in Jane Doe? They put it all together. And while we can and should be proud as men to be here in such high and quite honestly increasing numbers year after year, we are also mindful of the women who have led this movement for over 40 years, great leaders. Allow me to introduce one of those leaders, the current executive director of Jane Doe, Inc., Deborah Robin. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh no, louder. That's great. It's amazing to me. This, I'm just looking around and taking in the number of people who are here. I don't know that we've ever filled the balcony this far. Nine years. And the first year, we're like, can we do this again? And the second year, can we do this again? So I hope you're all marking the first Thursday next year in 2017, because it'll be our 10th. And of course, we're going to do it again. You know, White Ribbon campaign mirrors and responds to the evolving ways in which we talk about these issues. And it also invites us to have the opportunity to have a collective experience that both challenges us and invites all of us to think about the how, how the world could and will be different. Reimagine manhood. That's our theme, our invitation, our call to action, and it's the hashtag of the day, so please use it. I want to do some thank yous first. For those of you that may not know us, I hope you will get to, Jane Doe is a statewide membership coalition with more than 60 sexual and domestic violence organizations across the Commonwealth. We are strong, we are powerful, voice in Massachusetts, and together with all of you, we really can make a difference, and we do. To our members who are here today, to advocates who are here from other states, to the White Ribbon Day affiliates and ambassadors, so many of whom are here today, we thank you for your commitment. This is not a one-day thing. This is an all-year campaign. And I also want to give a shout out to a couple of new affiliates. Affiliates are organizations that sign on to work on White Ribbon Day. And you, if you're not, if your organization isn't an affiliate, please go on our website and do that. This year, we're so excited to work with the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts. Boston Medical Center Domestic Violence Program, and the Provider Council. Michael, where are you? Really excited. Please continue to use your voices, your power, your passion to elevate these issues because prevention is possible. And I have to do a special shout out to the staff at Jane Doe, the amazing team I am so fortunate to work with every day. Thank you for your creativity and your dedication. And a special thank you to my colleagues, Tony Troop and Craig Norberg-Baum, wherever you are. The White Ribbon Day campaign has many interconnected messages. It's about changing social norms, expanding and improving the messages we are taught about what it means to be male, and addressing the ways in which gender binaries are so confining. It's also about our values and our visions for the future. To the youth who are here today, how will you show up differently as a result of your participation in this campaign? To others, how will you convey and mentor others towards reimagining manhood? What is our future and what does humanity really mean? Interestingly and often overlooked, the history of White Ribbon Day is not really specifically about domestic or sexual violence. The White Ribbon Campaign internationally was founded on a mass murder by a man in Montreal long before we talked about mass shootings or lone shooters. So when we talk about masculinity, we really can't leave out the issue of gun violence and its impact in our culture and society. In the past year, there have been 305 mass murders nationwide. 90% were perpetrated by men. Why is this? It's a good question to ponder. 
When we combine the popular culture images that glorify male violence, we are promoting the notion that violence is an acceptable solution to problems, and we need to change those messages and those scripts. In Massachusetts, we are really fortunate to have an event like this. When I see the diversity of people here with so much participation from all across the state, it is really phenomenal. And it's also really um, a momentous occasion when we have the governor, the lieutenant governor, many members of the administration, and other elected officials who are working with us collectively to share this call to action. I'm very proud of that. That in and of itself is wonderful and so important. And we work closely with all of you and really value the relationships and the conversations we have. And it enables us to make a difference in this state.